So you have to do an assessment piece for history class and you need to talk about causes and consequences but you're not sure what this means. Well these two terms are closely linked but it is important to know the difference between causes and consequences so that you're not confused. This video will explain both terms as well as providing you with some examples for how you can use them in your own writing. So let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to another History Skills video. Today we're looking at causes and consequences in history. The terms causes and consequences are key concepts that focus on historical knowledge. In order to master these ideas, you need to study your historical topic in detail. As you learn about the past, you'll discover that things do not simply happen without a reason. In fact, you'll find that historical events are always caused by things that happened before them. In a similar way, events don't just end without affecting people and events that follow on from them. Every historical event creates changes that have consequences long after it is over. The most important first step in understanding causes and consequences is to know what historical event you're talking about. It is only once you know what event you're looking at that you can begin to investigate what caused it and what its consequences were. To do this, make sure you can identify the following things about your event. First of all, the name of the event. Secondly, the date during which it occurred. And thirdly, what specifically happened during this event. Once you know these things about your historical event, you are ready to find out its causes and consequences. Now, let's look at each of these terms individually. A cause is a personal thing that makes something happen. For example, if I throw a rock at a window, the window will break. In this scenario, the event was the window breaking. But what caused it to break? Well, two things did. The rock itself and the fact that I threw it. These were the causes of the broken window. In a similar way to the window example, every historical event occurred only because of a series of events that led to it. Therefore, things that directly led to the event are called causes. Almost every historical event has more than one cause. In history, we divide causes into two kinds, short-term causes and long-term causes. Causes that only occurred a few hours, days or weeks before the event are called short-term causes. Causes that existed for years, decades or centuries before the event are called long-term causes. But please be careful. Just because something occurred before the event does not mean it caused it. You should only focus on events that you can prove are directly related to your event. Another way of thinking about it is to say that the later event would not have occurred if the earlier one had not happened first. Now let's look at the second concept. A consequence is something that happens as a direct result of something else. Using the same example as before, if I throw a rock at a window, the consequence of that action will be the shattering of the glass, and probably angering the unfortunate person who owns the window. Both the broken glass and the angry owner are the consequences of the thrown rock. In a similar way, every historical event has a flow-on effect upon things that occur after it. Things that occurred only because of the existence of the historical event you're investigating are called consequences. Consequences can include impacts upon people, societies, beliefs or any other facet of history. And most historical events have more than one consequence. Just as with causes, consequences can be categorized into long and short term consequences. Those that occurred only a few hours, days or weeks after the event are called short term consequences. Those that occurred years, decades or centuries after the event are called long term consequences. Now that you've grasped the concepts of cause and consequence, you'll notice something very powerful. As you study more history, you'll begin to realize that causes and consequences are intimately related. It is extremely common to find that the consequences of one historical event actually become the causes for an entirely new historical event. For example, the consequences of the end of the First World War are frequently cited as the causes of World War II over 20 years later. Now that you know what causes and consequences are, let's look at an example to solidify your learning. First, let us clearly focus on a specific historical event in order to identify its causes and consequences. For this example, we're looking at the moon landing. This took place on the 20th of July 1969, when Neil Armstrong became the first person to step on the moon 
as part of the Apollo 11 mission. This was a significant historical event. But what caused it? One long-term cause was the Cold War. The Soviets and the US had been competing with each other over two decades to build the most sophisticated rocket technology. The Apollo 11 mission was, in part, a way to beat the Russians. A second long-term cause was a speech by President Kennedy in May 1961, where he stated that he would be investing time and money into getting humans onto the moon. As a result, we can clearly see that without the Cold War and the speech by President Kennedy, the historical event of Armstrong landing on the moon would never have happened. Therefore, the moon landing was caused by the Cold War and President Kennedy's 1961 speech. However, we can also say that the landing of a human on the moon had historical consequences. One long-term consequence of the landing was as a result of the fact that the astronauts brought back rocks from the moon, which were then studied in great detail by scientists, who used the information to rewrite the history of the Earth. A second long-term consequence was that NASA invested thousands of new technologies in order to get humans to the moon, including what we call today computer chips. Engineers who worked on the moon landing used their new technologies to found companies like Intel, one of the world's largest technology companies. As a result, we can see that without the moon landing project, scientific study of moon rocks and the development of computer chips would never have happened. Therefore, we can confidently say that the study of lunar geography and the development of the computer industry were direct consequences of the 1969 moon landing. Now that you have a better understanding of causes and consequences in history, I hope that you feel more confident in your studies. If you need further explanations, examples and advice, head over to historyskills.com and I'll see you next time.